Good evening. This is All India Radio. I am VC Pramod and with me is Aditi Lumba with the evening news. The headlines. Cabinet approves setting up of National Recruitment Agency to conduct common eligibility test. Prime Minister says agency will prove to be a boon for crores of youngsters and boost transparency. Cabinet clears proposal for leasing out Jaipur, Guwahati and Tiruvananthapuram airports through public-private partnership. Fair and remunerative price of sugarcane increased to 285 rupees per quintal for 2020-21. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh expresses confidence in Indian Navy's preparedness to meet any challenge and COVID-19 recovery rate improves to 73.64%. The cabinet today approved setting up of the National Recruitment Agency NRA to conduct common eligibility test. Briefing media this afternoon, Union Minister Prakash Zavadekar termed it as a historic decision which will benefit job-seeking youth of the country. He said this fulfills the long-standing demand of the youth of the country. Today, the youth of the country are very difficult to give a lot of experience. In this case, the ITRC is the case of National Recruitment Agency, the Rashtriya Bharti संस्था ये परीक्षा लेने वाली कॉमन एलिजिबिलिटी टेस्ट ये लेगी और इसका नहीं युवाओं को लाभ मिलेगा जो नौकरी के लिए आवेदन करते हैं। Our correspondent has the details. The National Recruitment Agency will conduct a common eligibility test to screen and shortlist candidates for the Group B and C non-technical posts. NRA will have representatives of Ministry of Railways, Ministry of Finance, SSC, RRB and IBPS. Special focus on creating examination infrastructure in the 117 aspirational districts would go a long way in affording access to candidates at a place nearer to where they reside. The CET score of the candidates shall be valid for a period of three years from the date of declaration of the result. The best of the valid scores shall be deemed to be the current score of the candidate. There shall be no restriction on the number of attempts to be taken by a candidate to appear in the CET subject to the upper age limit. Relaxation in the upper age limit shall be given to candidates of SC, ST, OBC and other categories as per the extent policy of the government. Candidates would have the facility of registering on a common portal and give a choice of centers. Government has sanctioned a sum of 1,517.57 crore rupees for the National Recruitment Agency. The expenditure will be undertaken over a period of three years. National Recruitment Agency will ensure transparency and ease in recruitment process both for the candidate and the recruiting organization. CET scores can be shared with central and state governments, PSUs, private sector, thus reducing recruitment costs of these organizations. Initially, the NRA will conduct CET twice a year. Suparna Sekia, IIR News, Delhi. In a series of tweets this evening, Prime Minister Narendra Modi said the National Recruitment Agency will prove to be a boon for crores of youngsters. Mr. Modi said through the common eligibility test, the NRA will eliminate multiple tests and save precious time as well as resources. He said this will also be a big boost to transparency. Home Minister Amit Shah thanked the Prime Minister for approving the creation of the National Recruitment Agency NRA in today's Cabinet meeting. In a series of tweets, Mr. Shah said this transformational reform will remove the hurdles of multiple exams for central government jobs through CET. The cabinet, which met under the chairmanship of the Prime Minister, also approved a proposal for leasing out three airports of the Airports Authority of India through public-private partnership. Briefing median, media, Union Minister Prakash Zavadekar said the three airports are Jaipur, Guwahati and Tiruvananthapuram. तीन एयरपोर्ट लीज देने का आज फैसला हुआ जयपुर गुवाहाटी और तिरुवनंतपुरम इससे जो अपफ्रंट 1070 करोड़ लगभग मिलेंगे ये एयरपोर्ट अथॉरिटी ऑफ इंडिया दूसरे छोटे शहरों में एयरपोर्ट का विकास करने में उपयोग में लाएगी और सबसे बड़ी बात है कि एयरपोर्ट अथॉरिटी ऑफ इंडिया ये परमानेंट प्राइवेट को नहीं दे रहा है ये 50 साल वो चलाने के बाद फिर से एयरपोर्ट ऑफ इंडिया को ये एयरपोर्ट्स वापस मिलेंगे Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs, CCEA, has approved fair and remunerative price of sugar cane payable by sugar mills for the sugar season 2020-21 at 285 rupees per quintal for a basic recovery rate of 
एक करोड़ गन्ना किसानों के लिए इस साल भी परंपरा के अनुसार जो फेयर एंड रेम्यूनरेटिव प्राइसेस है लाभकारी मूल्य बढ़ाकर दिया है अब दो सौ पर क्विंटल यानी अट्ठाईस सौ पचास रूपये एक टन का दाम निश्चित हुआ है दस परसेंट रिकवरी के आधार पर यह है लेकिन अगर ग्यारह परसेंट रिकवरी होती है तो अट्ठाईस रूपये पचास पैसे ज्यादा मिलेंगे पर क्विंटल CCEA also approved one-time relaxation to Power Finance Corporation and Rural Electrification Corporation for extending loans to DISCOMs above limits of working capital cap of 25% of last year's revenues under Ujwal DISCOM Assurance Yojana. For extending loans to distribution companies DISCOMs above limit of working capital cap of 25% of last year's revenue. 25% of the cap has been extended a little bit, and it will be the same thing. And all the governments will be benefited, and the liquidity will be increased. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh has expressed confidence in the Indian Navy's preparedness to meet any challenge through a proactive response in deploying its ships and aircrafts. The minister applauded the Indian Navy for their role in protecting the maritime interests of the nation. Addressing the Naval Commanders Conference, Mr. Singh congratulated the Indian Navy on the conduct of the biggest ever evacuation operation, Operation Samudra Setu, which has contributed extensively to the national interest. He said the Navy was instrumental in bringing home almost 4,000 people from neighboring countries based in the Indian Ocean region. The minister said Indian Navy has effectively carried out mission-based deployment to protect maritime interests by deploying naval ships and aircraft at major and sensitive locations. On the first day of the Naval Commanders Conference, Navy Chief Admiral Karambir Singh also addressed the top commanders of the Navy. The three-day conference is a biennial conference which was to be held in April but was postponed due to the pandemic. Our correspondent reports, security in the Indian Ocean amidst the situation at the line of actual control in Ladakh is on the agenda apart from the Navy's modernization. In Jammu and Kashmir, one terrorist was killed in an encounter with security forces in Chitragam area in Shopian district this afternoon. The identity of the slain terrorist is being ascertained. The joint operation was in progress to reports came last in. Details are awaited. Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar has announced an excretion of 36 lakh rupees each to the families of two martyred soldiers, Khurshid Khan and Lavkush Sudarshan Sharma of the state. The two made a supreme sacrifice for the country in terror attack in Baramula district of Jammu and Kashmir on Monday. Mr. Kumar also announced that one dependent from each of the martyr's family would be provided a job by the state government. Gujarat anti-terrorist squad arrested a sharpshooter from Ahmedabad-based hotel last night. According to the preliminary report, the accused was plotting assassination of state BJP leader and former minister of state for whom, Gordon Zadafia. The accused detained by the ATS has been identified as Iqbal Mohammed Rafiq. He belongs to the Maharashtra as per the Aadhaar card. Five MLAs of Manipur who had resigned from the Congress joined the BJP today at the party headquarters in New Delhi. The MLAs joined in the presence of Manipur Chief Minister N. Biren Singh, party's National Vice President Bajant Panda and National General Secretary Ram Madhav. Among the five MLAs include Okram Henry Singh, the nephew of Congress Legislature Party leader and former Chief Minister Okram Ibobi Singh. Speaking on the occasion, Mr. Madhav said Manipur suffered a lot during the 15-year rule of the Congress. He said the BJP-led NDA government came to the state in 2017 and it is moving ahead with 16% GDP growth in the last three and a half years. Northeast may fastest growing states may ek state bani hai. 16% GDP growth ke saath wo state aage bada raha hai. Pradhan Mantri ne ek ghar ghar jal pahunchane ki yojana ke liye Manipur ko chuna hai. The former MLAs later made BJP President J.P. Nadda. The Supreme Court today held that the Central Bureau of Investigation CBI probe into the FIR launched against actress Rhea Chakrabarti in connection with the death of Sushant Singh Rajput is lawful. The Apex Court further directed the Mumbai police to hand over all the evidence in the case to the CBI. The judgment was passed by the single judge bench of Justice Rishikesh Roy. The court also directed the CBI to look into any other cases registered in the future in relation to the death of the actor. The Maharashtra government has also been ordered to assist the CBI in the investigation. The court also held that the FIR lost in Bihar was lawful. On July 30th, Riya Chakrabarti moved Supreme Court seeking transfer of the case lost against her. 
After the order was pronounced, the Maharashtra government sought to appeal against it. However, the court declined to entertain the same. Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar has welcomed Supreme Court's decision in actor Sushant Singh Rajput that case. Mr. Kumar said there is no further scope of argument as the top court has now given its verdict in the matter. He expressed hope that justice will be ensured in the case and proper investigation will be carried out by the CBI at the earliest. Maharashtra's Home Minister Anil Deshmukh has said that the state government welcomes the Supreme Court verdict allowing transfer of investigation to CBI in actor Sushant Singh Rajput death case. Mr. Deshmukh said the state will provide whatever cooperation is required. Meanwhile, Mumbai Civic Chief Iqbal Singh Chahal has said that CBI officers coming to Mumbai will have to seek quarantine exemption through an official email. He said if the team is visiting for seven days and has valid return tickets, they will be exempted from quarantine as per existing rules. In case the team wants to stay beyond seven days, then they will have to officially seek exemption. You're listening to the evening news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Cabinet approves setting up of National Recruitment Agency to conduct common eligibility test. Prime Minister says agency will prove to be a boon for crores of youngsters and boost transparency. Cabinet clears proposals for leasing out Jaipur, Guwahati and Tiruvannantapuram airports through public-private partnership. Fair and remunerated price of sugarcane increased to 285 rupees per quintal for 2020 and 21. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh expressed confidence in Indian Navy's preparedness to meet any challenge and COVID-19 recovery rate improves to 73.64%. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. With sustained preemptive and timely interventions, over 2 million people in the country have successfully recovered from COVID-19 so far. The recovery rate continues to register its upward trend and stands at 73.64% as on today. India registered over 60,000 recoveries in the last 24 hours, which is also the highest number of recoveries from COVID-19 in a single day. So far, a total of 20,37,870 people have recovered in the country. The case fatality rate continues to show steady decline and now stands at 1.91%. India is continuously stepping up its COVID testing capacity. Over 8 lakh samples were tested in the country in the last 24 hours. The cumulative COVID sample test done so far in the country has further risen to reach 3 crore 17 lakh 42,782 tests. The e Sanjeevni digital platform of the Health Ministry has completed 2 lakh teleconsultations. This milestone was achieved within a short span of 10 days since the 9th of August when Health Minister Dr. Harshwardhan presided over a meet to commemorate the completion of 1.5 lakh teleconsultations. The e Sanjeevni platform has proved its utility and easy access for the caregivers and the medical community and those seeking health care services in the times of COVID. The three-day monsoon session of the Uttar Pradesh Assembly will commence from tomorrow, with authorities making special seating arrangements following COVID-19 protocols. Talking to AIR News, Assembly Speaker Hride Narayan Dikshit said, Uttar Pradesh will be the first state in the country to hold regular monsoon session of the State Assembly during Corona pandemic. <laughs> इसमें हमने एक-एक सीट छोड़कर पानी सदस्यों के बैठने की व्यवस्था की है। सदन के सभा मंडप के पास दोनों तरफ लाबीज हैं, वहाँ भी मानी सदस्य बैठेंगे और ऊपर भी दर्शक दीर्घा में भी हमने मानी सदस्यों के बैठने की व्यवस्था की है। हमने विधानसभा के सभी कर्मचारियों का कोरोना टेस्ट करवा दिया है सभी in Assam, responding to the state government's request, the Army has undertaken plasma donation drive for the COVID-19 patients. The Army, in collaboration with the Health Department, organized a plasma donation camp at Tezpur Medical College. Over 40 Army personnel of Gajraj Corps, who have recently recovered from COVID-19, donated their plasma. Assam Health Minister Himanta Bishwa Sharma and Lieutenant General Shantanu Dayal graced the occasion. In our series, Experts Speak on All India Radio, we bring you the views of the leading medical experts on COVID-19. Dr. Nand Kumar, Professor of Psychiatry, Ames, suggested people to stay at home, spend time with family members and practice yoga. 
stay at home spend time with the family do household work exercise listen to music sing with the family do yoga meditation and take care of emotional needs of the family dr anvita agarwal resident infectious diseases aims advise people to not be negligent and stay at their homes corona virus may be invisible but the number of people affected are very much visible and the numbers are increasing from day to day don't be negligent please stay at home the new services division of all india radio in its bilingual live phone in program tonight will bring you a special discussion program on covid-19 dr sanjay pande of gp pant hospital will participate in the discussion this can be heard tonight on fm gold channel and the additional frequencies from 9:30 pm onwards listeners can ask questions to the experts on toll free telephone number 18001157677 One can also ask questions on telephone number 011-2331-4444 and post queries on a Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts by hashtag AskAIR. Bangladesh will get priority in COVID-19 vaccine produced by India. This was stated by India's Foreign Secretary Harshvardhan Shringla in Dhaka today on the concluding day of the two-day visit to Bangladesh. He said India is in an advanced stage of COVID-19 trial and it is going to produce vaccines at a massive level. Foreign Secretary Shringla was talking to media after holding discussion with his Bangladeshi counterpart Masood bin Mumin. Mr Shringla said that he had come to Bangladesh as Prime Minister Narendra Modi felt that the strong bilateral relationship between the two countries must move forward. Earlier Foreign Secretary Shringla called on Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina yesterday. Bangladesh Prime Minister appreciated Prime Minister Modi's gesture of conveying the message and desire to take the relationship forward. External Affairs Minister Dr S J Shankar today spoke to Acting Foreign Minister of Afghanistan Mohammad Hanif Atmar. Both ministers discussed recent developments in Afghanistan and the bilateral cooperation. Dr J Shankar said both of them reaffirmed development partnership and connectivity linkages. The External Affairs Minister greeted Mr Atmar on Afghanistan Independence Day. Dr Jay Shankar also spoke to Foreign Minister of Oman Badr Al Buzaidi and congratulated him on his appointment. Both ministers discussed on the bilateral relations. Dr Jay Shankar said he is looking forward to working closely with Mr Al Buzaidi. Health Minister Dr Harshvardhan today presided over an online orientation workshop organized by Food Safety and Standards Authority of India FSSAI as part of its Eat Right Challenge. He also launched FSSAI's Eat Right India handbook and the website to help various stakeholders scale up Eat Right India initiatives across the country. Speaking on the occasion, Dr Vardhan said of the 135 crore people, 196 million are victims of chronic hunger. while another 180 million suffer from obesity Union Minister of Petroleum and Natural Gas and Steel Dharmendra Pradhan has said that the execution of five water projects to provide equitable affordable and safe drinking water to all will also increase the demand for domestic steel generate employment and strengthen the make in india campaign besides contributing to the larger vision of atmanirbhar bharat Mr Pradhan said that over 1 lakh household in the country are being supplied drinking water every day under the Jal Jeevan mission which targets to supply drinking water to every household by 2024 a report in odisha chronic water scarcity has become a challenge to meet the demand for drinking water as well as for irrigation citing relevant data from the department of drinking water and sanitation mr pradhan said that around the end of 2019 only less than 4% of the total 81 lakh 35000 rural households in the state were getting five water supply under the jal jeevan mission odisha has been sanctioned an amount of 812 crore rupees for the current fiscal as against 297 crore rupees the year before this will and then what of security in the state girish chandra das eia news bhubaneswar tribal affairs minister arjun munda today flagged off tribes india on wheels mobile vans through video conference in 31 cities across the country 57 mobile vans were flagged off in the cities including ahmedabad ilahabad bangalore bhopal chennai coimbatore delhi guwahati hyderabad mumbai and ranchi In our series on Atmanirbhar Bharat today we bring you a special story on rail bicycle. Indian Railways has introduced an innovative system to ensure passenger security in the country. 
Recently, the National Transporter introduced a novel mechanism, rail bicycle, to quickly travel on rail tracks for inspections, monitoring and urgent repairs. The Railway Ministry said during monsoon season, sometimes the situation becomes very difficult, causing unwanted attention of train services. With the help of rail bicycle, an emergency location can be easily reached for urgent repairs. Apart from emergency situations, rail bicycle is also very helpful for hot weather patrolling as well as daily monitoring of the rail tracks. Due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, some of the sections over the Indian Railways network are currently closed for the traffic. In these sections, rail bicycle is used for patrolling, ensuring safety and security. Rail bicycle is a lightweight structure of around 20 kilograms and can be lifted by just one person. The cycle can be easily assembled and dismantled by one person. The average speed of the rail bicycle is 10 km per hour and the maximum speed is 15 km per hour. The rail bicycle can carry two persons and Railways has said that these rail bicycles can be easily manufactured at very economical rates. The total cost of rail bicycle is only 5,000 rupees. In Madhya Pradesh, all poor people who have not received ration on the public distribution system so far will now get 1 rupee per kilogram wheat, rice and salt from the 1st of September. Chief Minister Shivrat Singh Chauhan gave the information while interacting with new beneficiaries of public distribution system through video conferencing today. We have a report. 37 lakh beneficiaries will be benefited by this decision of the state government. Apart from this, 5 kg per person free ration will also be provided to poor families by November. We will do such a system that the people of these poor brothers and sisters and the family of their families will get 1 rupee per kg of wheat, wheat and wheat. The Chief Minister has instructed all the collectors to ensure that all new beneficiaries in their districts are issued eligibility slips and their Aadhaar seating will be completed by August 31st so that they can get ration from September 1. Eligibility slips of new beneficiaries can be downloaded from the government's M Ration app and portal. Similarly, under the One Nation One Ration Card scheme, now the beneficiary can get ration from any ration shop. Sanjeev Sharma, AIR News, Bhopal. Ahead of the most awaited and popular Ganesh festival, the Maharashtra government has permitted resumption of inter-district bus transport service. It may be recalled that the service was stopped in an effort to contain the spread of coronavirus. However, the service has been resumed since lakhs of people, especially from Mumbai, travel to their hometowns in Ratnagiri, Raigad and Sindhudurg for the festival. More from our correspondent. After a break of almost five months, the Maharashtra State Road Transport Corporation is all set to resume its services. Transport Minister Anil Parab has said that all type of short distance buses will resume their services tomorrow onwards, while booking for long distance buses will also be resumed gradually. The Minister has clarified that passengers would not require an e-pass permission or approval for inter-district travel in these buses. However, an e-pass will remain mandatory for people travelling in private vehicles. People will have to strictly follow guidelines issued to prevent the spread of COVID-19 like frequent washing of hands and maintain social Social distancing. The State Transport Authority has been providing transport facility to migrant workers and essential services providers during lockdown. Nisha Rani, AIR News, Mumbai. Prime Minister Narendra Modi today greeted people on the Prakash Pura Butsav of the Holy Book Guru Granth Sahib. In a tweet, Mr. Modi said, The Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji illuminates the entire world with its pure teachings. He says Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji teaches people service, compassion and furthers harmony. It lays out the power towards a just and equal society. It also teaches us never to bow to injustice. Mr. Modi said inspired by it, Sikhs globally have done pioneering service in several spheres and their courage and kindness are remarkable. The Prime Minister hoped that Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji will keep guiding humanity forever. The first Prakash Pura Butsav marked the installation of Guru Granth Sahib Ji in Harmandar Sahib, also known as the Golden Temple, in 1604. There is no let-up in flood situation in Bihar. Surging water of Gandak and Ganga River has engulfed fresh areas. 1,80,000 cusack water has been discharged from one Sagar Dam in Madhya Pradesh. In view of this, district administrations of Rotas, Arwal and Patna have been put on alert. Over 81 lakh people spread over 16 districts are reeling under the impact of flood. Darbhanga district remained the worst hit, with over 20 lakh people affected by the floods, followed by Muzaffarpur and East Champaran districts in the state. 
Darbanga Samastipur rail section of East Central Railway remains suspended. 37 people have lost their lives in flood-related incidents in last 24 hours. 27 teams of NDRF and SDRF are carrying out relief and rescue operations. Over 5,50,000 people have been evacuated so far. About 8,000 8, people have been taken shelter in relief camps. Community kitchen centers have been set up to provide food to affected people. Now let us take a look at the weather forecast for tomorrow. The national capital Delhi will have generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. It will have a minimum temperature of around 25 degrees Celsius and maximum of 33 degrees. Mumbai will experience generally cloudy sky with heavy rain. The minimum temperature will be 25 degrees Celsius and the maximum will be around 30 degrees. Chennai will have generally cloudy sky with light rain or drizzle. The temperature will hover between 27 and 33 degrees Celsius. Kolkata will witness partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. The minimum temperature in the metropolis will be around 27 degrees Celsius while the maximum will be 33 degrees. On to the north in the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir, the minimum temperature will be 25 degrees Celsius in Jammu while the maximum will be around 33 degrees. The city will have generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. In Srinagar, the minimum temperature will be around 19 degrees while the maximum will be 29 degrees. The city will have generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. Ladakh will have partly cloudy clear sky with possibility of rain or thunderstorm or dust storm. The temperature will hover between 20 and 31 degrees Celsius. In Gilgit, the temperature will hover between 21 and 35 degrees Celsius. It will have generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. In Muzaffarabad, there will be generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. The temperature will hover between 22 and 32 degrees Celsius. In Dehradun, the temperature will hover between 24 and 29 degrees Celsius. The city will have partly cloudy sky with possibility of heavy rain or thunderstorm. In Chandigarh, there will be generally cloudy sky with possibility of development of thunder or lightning. The minimum temperature will be 27 degrees Celsius and the maximum will be around 30 degrees. In Hyderabad, the minimum temperature will be 22 degrees Celsius, while the maximum will be around 27 degrees. The city will have generally cloudy sky with intermittent rain. The minimum and maximum temperature in Ahmedabad will be around 26 and 31 degrees. The city will have generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. Sri Lankan government has granted approval to abolish the 19th Amendment to the Constitution and replace it with 20th Amendment. Minister of Mass Media, Kehelia Rambukwela, said the decision was taken at the first cabinet meeting of new government held this morning. President Gotabaya Rajapaksa and Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa has made abolition of 19th Amendment as the main election plan during the presidential and parliamentary elections. The amendment brought by previous government had put a two-term limit on presidency and curtailed the executive powers of president and transferred it to parliament and independent commissions. Market benchmarks today logged marginal gains amid bullish trend in global equities. On the other hand, rupee weakened 6 paise against the US dollar, a report from the business world. The BSE Sensex closed at 38,615, up 86 points. On similar lines, the NSE Nifty rose 23 points to 11,408. In the broader market at the BSC, the mid cap rose 0.58% and the small cap gained 1.16%. The rupee paired its initial gains and settled 6 paise lower at 74 rupees and 82 paise against the US dollar. Gold prices fell by 640 rupees to 54,269 rupees per 10 grams in the national capital following a decline in international prices of the precious metal. Silver prices also faced selling pressure and declined by 3,112 rupees to 69,450 rupees per kilogram. And in intraday trade, Brent crude prices were trading around $45 per barrel, while WTI crude prices were around $42.50 per barrel. V. Ravi Kumar for AIR News. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Cabinet approves setting up of National Recruitment Agency to conduct common eligibility test. Prime Minister says agency will prove to be a boon for crores of youngsters and boost transparency. Cabinet clears proposal for leasing out Jaipur, Guwahati and Tiruvananthapuram airports through public-private partnership. Fair and remunerative price of sugarcane increased to 285 rupees per quintal for 2020-21. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh expresses confidence in Indian Navy's preparedness to meet any challenge. And COVID-19 recovery rate improves to 73.64%. And with that, we end the evening news. Good night.